Okay, my, my name is Coralie Coons. Uh, I want to talk about the election um, campaign. Not the election so much as the campaign. We're in the throes uh, of it with a couple of months to go. There are two unusual things about American elections compared to the rest of the world. And there is one unusual thing about this particular election. First, most other representative democracies have election campaigns that last a month or two. Uh, in the UK, it's one month. The longest election campaign ever in Canada was 74 days. That's about the length of time between now and November 6th. In France, a campaign lasts two weeks. Officially, ours lasts about a year, but the early guessing games dominate the news for even longer. Many other countries restrict or ban television campaign ads. Norway bans them. France heavily restricts them. Only in the United States are they the main focus of election campaigns. Repetition persuades. That's a basic rule of propaganda and advertising in general. The more times people are bombarded with the information, the more likely they are to agree with the message. The average cost of one 30-second primetime spot is about $110,000. It's those TV ads that make campaigns so expensive. The election becomes, which candidate can raise the most money for TV ads? They are the main reason why many candidates sell their soul to the highest bidders and why fundraising takes more of their time than lawmaking. TV ads are often negative and misleading, and they dumb down voters to think in sound bites and slogans. The TV networks make lots of money, though. The networks are mega corporations, and they are political kingmakers. These two differences Endless campaigns and dependence on TV ads mean that American election campaigns are not good for the American voting public and are not a good model for democracies across the world. Now, what is different about this election? Since I reached a voting age, there have been 15 election cycles. In most cases, Candidates of both parties try to present themselves as moderates who appeal to the mainstream of voters. Not this time. The Republican presidential and vice presidential candidates clearly represent a position that is more radically right-wing than any national candidates I have ever seen before. I use the term right-wing rather than conservative because conservative, by definition, means to preserve the status quo, not turn it upside down. Social Security, Medicare, progressive taxation, legal abortion, these are now the status quo. They have been around for between 40 and 100 years. Social Security has been working for 70 years and is projected to continue working, even without changes, for another 20. Also, a true conservative would be in favor of conservation, conservation of wilderness, of energy, conservation of resources. Why does the Republican Party, the ticket and the platform, now present itself openly as the extreme of social conservatism and corporate favoritism. How do they plan to win this election? <laughs>